Good morning. Mary's seventh day of Christmas. I think that that's the swans are swimming. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyhow, Merry Christmas to you and, and a Happy New Year. Couple of announcements for you. First of all, regarding the hymns, this is a neat order for worship. I look forward to it every year. Get to sing many of those Christmas, um, Christmas carols that we don't get to sing enough during the Christmas season. So this is great. We're going to sing all the verses of the first and the last hymn. And then we will sing the first two verses of the others that are interspersed throughout the um, liturgy. Does anybody need a bulletin? We were kind of running low on bulletins. OK, good, we got that covered. Um, I w want to greet Mark here. And any other visitors, if you just raise your hand, we could want to be sure to we sure to make him feel welcome and part of our worshiping um, family this morning. Any of you have announcements for us? Seeing none, let us begin with the order of confession and forgiveness. Amid the troubles and fears of this world, and there certainly are a lot of them this day, let us confess our sin and welcome God's forgiveness, grace, and love. Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. For your lack of faith and trust. Your sin was born in the poverty of a stable. Forgive our neglect of the poor. The shepherds left their flocks and went to Bethlehem. Forgive our selfishness. With great joy, the angels proclaimed, Do not fear, for I bring you good news of great joy. Today is born a Savior who is Christ the Lord. In Jesus, who is Savior, Christ, and Lord, our sins are forgiven. May you know the peace which the angels sang from the heavens. Indeed, God's forgiveness is good news of great joy. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is Savior and Lord, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty, Almighty God, you have made yourself known in your Son, Jesus, Redeemer of the world. We pray that his birth as a human child will set us free from the old slavery of our sin. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Today's first reading comes from the night. Chapter of Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Here ends the first reading. second reading is from Micah chapter 5 verses 2 through 5a. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, you are one of the little clans of Judah. From you shall come for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace.
The third reading comes from the first chapter of Luke. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. fourth reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them.
The fifth reading is taken from the second chapter of Luke. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. The sixth reading is from Luke chapter 2, verses 21 through 36. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord, Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what was stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own sword too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage.
The seventh reading comes from the second chapter of Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. appointed for this day, John 1, the first 14 verses. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, 
and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. It is you, loving God, who lights our path with truth. Your word, Jesus, is truth. In his light, draw all to the manger. Together in wonder with the shepherds. In his light, draw all to the manger. To kneel in reverence with the wise ones. In his light, draw all to the manger. To sing for joy with the angels. In the brightness of his life, cast away the darkness of injustice, poverty, and hunger in the world. It is you, loving God, who meets us on our way. In the light of Jesus, show the world the way of life. Amen. You may be seated while we receive the offering.
Let us pray together as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace from God's own heart, peace from the child in the manger, and strength from the spirit of life, be blessings for you today and forever. Amen.